and uh, we did the uh, application of body line and the indifference curve. Then we extend that application to the decision in the labor market, how many hours you want to supply the labor, okay? So basically, so far, the, the decision we talk about is two kinds of decisions, you know, the decision on the, on the goods market, you know, how many goods you can buy, and the decision on the labor market, how many labor you want to supply, okay? But either market, in either market, and the, the rationale, the logic behind it is exactly the same. You're going to use a budget constraint and you're going to use the indifference curve. Okay, so. And so now what we're going to do, the, the last part in this chapter is, okay, we talk about all these decisions, you know, in the good market, in the labor market. How are we going to connect all these decisions or we learn from here to what we originally learned in the supply demand chapter? So chapter two, we'll learn about supply and demand, right? Okay, and I just actually tell you, okay, this is a supply curve, this is demand curve. And I really did not tell you where the supply and the demand curve come from, right? So the last part of this chapter that we're gonna talk about today is make the connection. Okay, how are we going to connect what we learn and the, from this chapter four into what we learn in chapter two? Okay, make the connection, all right? So to do that, I'm go not going to introduce you this theory. Let's just do a problem, another application problem, okay? We're going to use this example to show you where can we find the connection between this chapter four and the chapter two. Any question? Okay. So again, this is a decision, uh, this is a decision in the good market, okay? And uh, so I'm going to present you a problem and I will ask you to solve it. Then we're going to derive the concept that we're going to talk about from this um, problem. Okay, so um, suppose you're a consumer and you're given a hundred dollars. So you have a hundred dollars. And you're going, to consume, you're going to use this money to spend on two different goods. Wine, you know you can consume several number of bottle of wines. Okay, and the good X represents number of bottles of wine. Okay, you can consume wine. And then you can consume quiche. Number of quiche. person's preference, right? Because the person's preference determines the budget line and then an indifference curve. Right. So we only have the first element. In order to identify this person's preference, we need the, the person's utility. So now I'm going to give you that information. Try your best to be here on time. Okay, we we'll talk oh, about externality. Okay, sorry. try every best, very best, because it does um, interrupt my. Okay. Okay. So this is the second part of information I'm going to give you is this. Out of the line, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six, just five. Okay. Now I'm going to give the most important utility from it.
This gave you, when you consume different number of bottle one, what did you see in total satisfaction? This gave you the preference, this person's preference on the wine, right? Okay, how much satisfaction you're gonna gain by consuming the different bottles, right? Number of cash, then the utility. Now, do we know the person? Do we know the person? With uh, this information, do we know the kind of person we're talking about? Answer me. Yes. Yes. We know the person's preference. We know what kind of person we're dealing with. So, this gives us information about indifference curve. It did not give you the difference curve, but this is the indication of the shape of the indifference curve, right? Mm -hmm. You have to be very clear about the concept. Because when you're clear about the concept, then you can connect the information with the concept. Okay. If you're the person who's going to give the exam and write about a, write a question, what are you going to do? What are you going to write about it? What kind of question are you going to write? Good question. Yes. Maximum utility. What is the maximum amount of utility this person can get? What else? I'm going to ask that question. And I'm going to do graph too. What else I'm going to ask? Somebody else? What kind of other question you can write? Only if you put yourself in a teacher's shoes, then you can start understanding the question deeper. If you're about to give an exam to a student, what kind of other question you can ask? How would this information be useful to a store owner that's going to sell these items? How does this information is useful to what? Yeah, like if you knew how, if you knew what a person's thinking was before they went to the store to buy bottles of wine or quiche, you would know how to better sell it to them. Okay. So the question is, how does this person going to spend their money? The basic question, right? That's the question we have been trying to answer in this chapter. You know, given this person's, you know, income, the price of good, and also the indifferent, you know, the utility level, how this person going to spend the money, right? So that's the first set of questions. How is this person going to spend this money to maximize the utility? How are we going to use the graph to explain that behavior, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Give you 30 seconds to think about how do we approach that? person going to spend this money, you know, $100 on one, on one I'm assuming first you have to draw the budget line. Good
that in the Are you guys following me on this? So you can have different number of ways consume three bottle of wine and two quiche, and you'll find this value. Three bottle, four bottle of wine, one quiche, you'll find this value. Then you're going to find the consumption combination where that value is at. You see my point here? Can you do an example of it? Please. First, I'm going to. I'm okay. going to. But first, of all, I want you to follow the concept. So if it equals one, then that's the equilibrium point. It's like trial and error. Well, that's the maximum. Then we'll have to have another condition satisfied, right? What the other condition in addition to that? Remember, I told you this cannot be the only condition. We'll have to have another one. Another condition is you have to income. you have to spend all the income, right? <clears throat> so do you think that give you enough information for you to figure out now? The, is the margin utility is what? that the change in from you know one additional unit? Yeah. Constant margin utility of, let me ask you, what is the margin utility of consuming the second bottle of wine? So second bottle of wine. 370 minus 190. Mm -hmm. 370 minus 190, right? So that would be 
What is the margarine utility of consumed the second quiche? And if the ratio of these two is equal to? One. Not one. <laughs> so we know that consumption bundle does oh, not satisfy okay. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's the way we do this problem. Okay. So to make it more easier for you, You need to create another column here. I'm your X and I'm your Y. Marginal utility for each quiche and the marginal utility for each bottle one. So you create a new column here and finish this right now on your own. Does everyone know what I'm asking you to do? So the marginal utility for one bottle of wine is 190. 190, that's right. That's right. You subtract the uh, from the uh, subtract the the one that previous number. Anyone has problem with this? Have question? Anyone? So is everyone following me on this? Okay. If you have problem, raise your hand. Make sure. If you finish the origin, move on to the next. You finished these two columns? It should not be hard. Uh, I just keep getting lost. Yeah, but... Yeah, that's fine. Oh, yeah, I know what to do. It's just like here. What's this one here? It's 190. What's this one? 180. This one? 160. 60. So if you go to so everybody is good here, right? Everybody's good here. So now we're going to do this kind of matching, right? Matching. But if you use this formula. And then you're going to take one value here and divide this value here. I guess, I guess you could find it easily for this question, right? Mm, okay, actually, you don't need to make the transformation of the formula to do that. So actually, you can find it here. So what are the common ones? What are the ones that will make into or equal to one here? Five and five. Right? Mm -hmm. You gotta spend all your money, right? And how about another pair? Yeah, 20 and 20. Okay, so this tells you that if you buy four, key, four wines and the three quiche, if you buy five bottle wine and five quiche, both will satisfy this condition here, right? But which one you should choose? Five and five. five. Five and five. Why? Because you spend all the money. You spend all the income. This one will not spend you all the income. The second condition is not satisfied. is what is your maximized total utility? What is your total utility? <laughs> what you hmm? 
that's the highest utility level you can get from this consumption. Got it? We have the mathematical answer. This is 10, this is 10. Now, how do we draw this in different curve? That tangent to this one? 5 over 5. We know 5 mm -hmm. and 5 is the equilibrium, right? Mm -hmm. So this in different curves must tangent to this budget line at 5 and 5. This, this problem everybody follows? <laughs> now I'm going to change the price. I'm going to change the value. I'm going to change this into $15. Now I want you to figure out everything again. Does the utility change? The person still this person. It's only the budget constraint part is different. <coughs> do we need to change this two do we need to change this column here? Yeah. You'd have to because that one comes up thirty. This one? No. No. Yes or no? Yes. No. no. Somebody said yes. Why do you need to check this? Well, the only other solution would be 60 and 60, and it's $15 a bottle, at four bottles. How do you get this number? This is sweet. Because it doesn't have people one, it has people 1.5 now. Do you have to change this two column? Uh, no. In these two columns, you did not use any price, right? Mm -hmm. right. You just subtract, subtract, subtract. Right. This remains the same. What is different? Well, the slope's going to be different. It's going to be 15 and 10, so it's going to be 1.5. Okay. So then I guess you're going to have to find something that equals 1.5. Now it is equal to 1.5. Mm -hmm. okay. So this remains the same. You don't need to change anything here. Is it easy to find? 1.5. Really odd number, so that should not be too hard. That's going to be 120 and 80. 120 80, right? Mm -hmm. There's another set too. There's another one. 16, 40. 60 40. 60 divided by 40, 1.5, 120 divided by 80 is 1.5. Right? You guys see that? Okay, so now what is two pairs that satisfy the condition? Three, Three and two. Three and two. And one four. And what's this? Right? Correct? <coughs> Which one are you going to choose? Four and four. Yeah. Why four and four? Because it fills the rest of your account. Mm -hmm. Full bottle wine, $15, that would be $60. For quiche, $40. 40 plus 60 the $100. So you're going to pick this one? Yep. Because you spent all the income, right? Okay. 
Okay. And then, what is the total utility equal to the rate? 50 plus, 550 plus 290. 840. Mm -hmm. 840 right now. Right. All right. Now, with this new change, I want you to draw this new change on the same graph. How do we change the graph now? You got, um, Does this one change? Yes. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, no, 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 no. Does this one change? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> How does this one change? Go to the left, right? Okay. And we don't have a new indifference curve, right? Tangent to which point? Tangent to which point? This utility here, this in different curve represent 880, this represent 840. The first in different curve represent the level of utility which is 880, the second in different curve represent the level of utility which is 840. It's lower. Your budget constraint is changed, and now you tangent to a different in different curve, and you have a different equilibrium point. Question. Why don't you change the um on the budget line? Mm -hmm. Ten to a uh, different number. Yeah, you this one this one will be different. What is? Maybe like six. Sixty-seven. Six point seven. Six point seven. Six. You would. Oh, six point seven, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So this is a graph accompanying the calculation. Everyone is comfortable? 6.7. 6.7? Okay. You use this $100 divided by 15? Oh, yeah. That is 6.7. Yeah. Right? How about you guys? Are comfortable? Okay, so everybody knows what's going on here? Yep. All right, good. All right, so this is a, a real problem. I want to talk about is not just how do we calculate this problem. We want to derive something from this problem. What I want to derive is this. So we have this calculation going on, and we know if this px changes, and you're going to if this px changes again, and you're going to have another new budget line, and you're going to find another indifference curve, then you can find the equilibrium point again, right? So if we keep changing this P, an equilibrium point will keep changing. So now I'm going to draw another graph. And this graph here, this represents the price of bottle of wine. Okay. And this represents the number of bottle of wines that you consume. First, we start with $10. And uh, when, when the price is $10, and given the same income, and given the same price of the other good, with, when the price is $10, you consume five bottles of wine. Right? So now if I keep increasing 
in the price of wine while maintaining all other things remain the same and you know this will be keep decreasing right mm -hmm. okay if i have all these points i connect them and what is this the indifference curve what is this so it's, it's oh, demand curve the utility Look at the variable and vertical axis and the variable and horizontal axis and interpret this relationship. It's a demand. <laughs> this is the market price of the wine. And this is how many wines you want to consume, how many wines you is demanded by this particular consumer given all other factors constant income is constant the price of the other good constant because you know if those things are not constant then this will be different right so this is the demand and that's where the demand curve we learn from chapter two come from it come from the consumer theory it come from the optimization decision theory Using the optimization decision theory, theory, we're able to figure out at each different price and what is the quantity demanded. Then we connect them all, and that is demand. That's the connection between chapter two and chapter four. The demand curve comes from the consumers they will learn from this chapter. Okay. So now you, everything is connected. You know, yes, they are in a different chapter, but they all connected. You need to see the whole picture, the connection. That's the connection. So that's the last concept from this chapter. Now explain to you where is the demand curve comes from. Now do you have the bigger picture? I mean the intricacies can be tough. And if I gave you a real problem, you may go through the details, calculation. But now do you have the big picture of what you do? Question. We have finished this chapter four. There's a lot of stuff going on. But my exam is always much easier than my lectures. Let's <laughs> go. <Cool. laughs> I want you to understand. That's why the lecture is challenging. But when I test you, I don't want to be that mean. <laughs> is it easier than homework, though? <laughs> <laughs> it's similar to the homework problem. All right, that's it's fine. similar. Mm -hmm. It's very, very similar. So let's talk about the exam. So on, on Thursday, we can move on some new stuff we don't have to talk. Let's talk about the exam right now. So just two chapters, chapter two and two chapter four. Okay. And you're going to have two questions from each chapter. Just two questions. Two questions from each chapter. Oh, actually, I'm so sorry, five questions. Totally five questions. And two questions from chapter two, three questions from chapter four. Okay. And each question comes for 20%. Okay. Straightforward. And there are multiple parts in each question. Okay. Um, now let's talk about chapter two. For the chapter two, there will be question ask you to calculate the equilibrium point mathematically and graphically okay the example of that kind of question would be like and pick a couple ones mathematically and what graphically you said the equilibrium point mm -hmm. yeah. for example like this question six look at your book Question 
question six. Okay, I give you supply, I give you demand function. I want to find equilibrium point. Straightforward enough, right? And I want you to draw it accurately. Draw the supply and the demand. Okay, the market on. Um, and then when you draw the graph, I want the graph to be accurate. I want, remember what I'm saying today, if you're not paying attention, you're gonna miss some points. I want you to label the y-axis, I want you to label the axis. If you don't, you miss the any label, you're gonna miss a point there. Label it. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what I'm talking about, label it? P, Q, okay? <laughs> now once you find the equilibrium point, then mark those equilibrium points on the graph. Show me this is the equilibrium price equal to 40, this is the equilibrium quantity equal to 20, something like that. What was that page number? Question six. Page seventy. Do you have the textbook? Yeah, sure. Don't be lazy. Get it out. Okay. And also, we learned the price ceiling on the price floor, right? So the second part of question, you probably expect I'm going to say now the price floor is equal to sixty or whatever. What is the shortage or surplus? Given that price floor or setting, okay. Then, a further question would be, what is consumer surplus? What would be the producer surplus? Like what they asked in question six and several other questions. But would be answer that like hmm? what we graph or just how to solve it? Mathematically, I want you to solve it and also I want you to draw on graph. On graph. It's always math and graph together. Always. Okay. Mm -hmm. Consumer surplus, producer surplus. Calculate it and mark on a graph. Okay. So that's one of the questions. And the second question I'm going to put on is a question on the tax policy. On the tax. The government imposes a tax. So similar question would be question seven. Like ask for this. But I'm not going to use the same question, I'm going to change it. And also, I may change it. I say, I may say, okay, now it's a tax. It's imposed on the consumer, not producer. This is something you gotta work on at home. If the tax is not so far, this book, you know, in the book they talk about what is the, when the tax is on the producer. What if the tax is on you? You have to pay it. Every time you buy a unit, you're going to pay a unit tax. <laughs> when that happens, how are you going to change the demand function? Or the supply function? Are you going to change the supply function? Are you? Are you going to change the supply function? No. Did I run? Hear my question. Are you going to change the supply function? Everybody else. When the tax is on consumer, are you going to change the supply function? No. 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 You sure? Yeah. One hundred percent sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how are you going to modify that demand function? It will be different from the modification on the supply. Okay. Work on this. Work on it. Make up a problem you yourself. And work on it. And match it to the graph. Okay, so if the tag is on the cons consumer, how the demand function is modified, then find a new equilibrium point. So find all the equilibrium point, mark on the graph, find a new equilibrium point, mark on the graph. Okay. Now I'm gonna ask you what is dead weight loss? Both mathematically and both graphically. We went through a problem in the class. Okay. 
something you need to work on. And what is the government's revenue, mathematically and graphically? You guys need to practice those problems before you come to the exam. I'm telling you, if you don't practice, I can guarantee you there will be some mistake you're going to make in the exam. Practice. Once you practice, it's straightforward. Okay? Practice. So that's the second question I'm going to ask you. So you know what I'm going to do for this chapter. One question is on the price setting, mm -hmm. price for equilibrium point graphing. The second one is on the tax policy graphing, mathematically cal calculated. Okay, now let's look at the question from the chapter four. First question, of course I'm going to ask you to draw the graph that is budget constraint in different curve. But what I'm going to give you is a story or situation. Similar to the buy one, get one free. But it's not exactly the same. The example I gave to you is going to be something like that. It's going to be there is a modification. Okay. You have original income. You can draw original budget constraint. Then I'm going to change something. I'm going to change the income. And I'm going to change the price of the one good. Then on top of that, I'm going to say, and you can get one free if you buy one more. So it's not going to be just buy one get one free. It's going to have something else there. If I were you, I'm going to write down what I'm saying here. I'm going to change the buzzer constraint, but you have to accommodate uh, different changes, just not one change. Okay? That's the first question. I'm going to ask you, it's very similar to what we did in the last class. In the last class, I showed you uh, why the person will never buy exactly eight bottles, why the employer will never use the, um, a increased pay for each hour instead of we use overtime pay. So I'm going to ask a question very similar to that. And you have to be able to draw the budget constraint, draw the budget line, and draw the indifference curve, and utilize the budget line and the indifference curve to answer the question. So to study this question, I would just go over the notes from last class. Make sure you can replicate everything I do on the blackboard yourself. There's no, not much calculation. It's graph. It's so that's graph. And also, I want you to try your best to make the graph on the exam as pretty as possible. If it's extremely pretty, you may get bonus point because that's going to make my grading easier. Okay, so that's the second question. And the third question is related to what we talk about today. Okay, I give you a real example, the information on the budget constraint, the information on the utility, then I ask you what is a person's, you know, uh, how the person going to consume, 
How many goods the person gonna buy? In order to maximize utility. And once you find it, then you draw the graph shows me that equilibrium point, just like what I did there. And show me how do we derive the demand curve of the bottle lines from using that. How do we derive the demand curve for the bottle line? I mean, ask you how do we derive the, the demand curve for the for the quiche? And I may also ask you, okay, if if I am going to ask you to draw and to derive the demand for quiche, and at the same time I change the income, am I able to do it? I'm going to repeat what I just said. If I ask you to use this information to derive the demand of quiche, but same, but same time, every time I change the price of quiche, I change the income. Would I be able to derive the demand of quiche if I change the income constantly? Change the income. Income. Remember when we do this, change from here to here. This does not change, this does not change, right? So I'm saying, okay, if this change to this, this is the same, but this changes, am I still able to find the demand for Y? Yes. Think about it. Do not respond to me right away. I may just ask that question play and ask you to explain to me whether you you'll be able to draw the demand. Be able to find the demand with that income. So now this requires you to understand the demand definition of the demand. What is the definition of the demand? I'm now going to review the answer here. This is something I want you to think about it. Figure out answer yourself. If I tell you answer, then it's basically I'm telling you what is exactly. Okay. Calculation and the graphing is everything on this. That's what I want. I want to train you in this class is do the graph, understand the graph, and think like whenever you answer an economic question, you in there to form establish this graph in your head. And that's what I'm trying to, to do. Because this part of critical thinking. Any other question on the exam? 20% for each question, the multiple parts. Do not give an empty space. Because if you write something, if you try it, you will get some credit. If you leave it empty, how can I give you credit for empty space? Even if you, you do not know, know how to try your best, dig out what you learned, what you, you don't know, and then put it there. Then you can gain some credit. The exam is not hard. It's everything what I just said. If you practice, you should get a very good grade. But again, the nature of this exam, if you don't practice, if you come here unprepared, and you're not going to get a good grade. You know, that's it. Any question? So the homework is due? Saturday. Saturday? Yes. Uh -huh. Um, I finished it today. You guys want to go already? Yes. yes. <laughs>